Hi guys, welcome to the Hits and Tips video about scrutineering. With us, Willie McEwen, uh, the lead judge in terms of scrutineering in the, the UK national final and in the world finals. Yeah. Willie, first of all, how, how, how long have you been doing scrutineering, uh, helping during, with scrutineering with F1 in schools? Um, probably since the first world finals, yeah. And that was in? Goodness, I can't remember. <laughs> Is it? What is it, 12 years? 12 years. 12 years, guys. 12 years of experience scrutineering. So the whole point of this video is to... Uh, I'm just going to ask Willie in, a, um, in a, an informal, just a casual conversation, some hits and some tips of things that normally teams fail. Not that they're failing on purpose, but normally it's just... It's too many things to make sure we are having it right. So sometimes it's distraction, sometimes it's doing the assembly. So hopefully this conversation will help you in terms of prepping your car, if it's for a regional final, if it's for a national final, or for the upcoming world finals. So we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of acrylic parts here on the table, Willie. Tell us a little bit about all these parts. Uh, this is a selection of gauges which we have made to help with scrutineering. Um, rather than have to measure everything, if we hold a gauge against the car, we can quickly assess whether it needs further investigation. We never fail a car on a gauge alone. So this helps the scrutineering judges for a first quick check, yeah. and in case of any doubts, you go in with more professional exactly. tools to Because um, all these files are actually available on the website. But um, as you know, a laser is not exactly accurate because the thickness of the cut can vary from laser to laser and if you measure some of these they won't be precisely the dimension yeah they may be 0.1 or something out but for the first check for this the first will check, help that, for good. And quick guidance when yes. you have to scrutineer 50 cars or 100 cars that helps a lot times three times three yeah. exactly. so if the f1 in schools competition it's it's not uh, just about the car, the students are judged with their marketing uh, um, skills and of course their 3D uh, design skills um, and they have to do a verbal presentation but it all starts with the car doesn't it? Does. So how important is scrutineering for the car before it goes into the track? I mean? Well we want to check that they have complied with the regulations obviously, yes. the technical regulations um, and a non-compliance car is going to be penalised and we also, there are critical regulations which if they break, we want to assess that before it races because once it races as you know it could end up being broken and then we can't measure. Yeah. So it's important that cars are scrutinised beforehand. So cars are always scrutineered before going into the race. race. This is to verify that they comply with all the rules and regulations. Technical regulations. So uh, uh, I guess that a, a really easy example would be a car cannot go onto the track if it's underweight. Exactly. So we would weigh it and then we would add ballast uh, twice the discrepancy. The so if so if a car is one gram underweight, it needs to take two grams more. to to yeah. balance the equation, isn't it? So one gram under, the car will end up being one gram so, over. So what, what's, what's the important, of course, you don't want to fail any rules no. because uh, that's points that, you, that you're losing, but what's the importance of critical rules? What's the consequence? Uh, well, the critical rules were brought in to prevent somebody doing a, like a professional file. We don't want somebody appearing with, say, a car and no wings, no rear wing, because it wouldn't look the part in the competition. Right. It's about a Formula One car, so we want it to look that way. So it's important that they have, for example, a rear wing and so on. Okay. So just to clarify, guys, we have some cars here on the table, some amazing cars. We are not saying in any way that these cars are failing a specific regulation. We are just want to show some of the amazing work that the students have. So we have cars from regional finals, national finals, and world finals level. So we're not saying that these cars no, are wrong exactly. in any way. We just want to demonstrate how it is easy to comply or not comply with a specific rule. So and, these cars are all amazing. And also these cars have gone through several races yeah. and they may fail now but didn't fail. But they, they, feel they didn't fail at the time, yes. yeah, of course. Um, so let, let's give some uh, practical examples now. So for example, in, in, regional, in a regional final, 
it's really easy for a team to it doesn't seem like it but it's really easy for a team to fail length yeah and, and you know exactly. that there's, there's a, the, the length rule where you, you, there's a minimum and a maximum and even so length they are failing yeah tell us why <laughs> well obviously the maximum length is 210 and the minimum is 170. We have a so, gauge here. So let's quickly this. measure a car, just show. So we would take this point. gauge, for example. The maximum so is that's the maximum. 210, yeah. and the minimum is 170. So we want that not to fit on, yeah. as you can see it doesn't, and we want this to fit over. And you can see so that perfect, that is more than 10 millimeters fit. gap, so we'll not investigate that any further. So, but yes, some do fail. But such a such a basic rule can sometimes t uh, students fail it. Yeah, so and if, if if I there are several this, causes for it. If I, yeah, if I, if I use this as an example, now I'm not saying it fails, but you can see the design intent was that this rear wing assembly would fit this shoulder. But when you look at it closely, you can see that there's a gap. Yeah. So that's that's when you are assembling the three D part into the model block, isn't it? Plus, there's paint and yeah. maybe filler there. So the paint is a factor. Filler, whatever has been used to smooth. It's the common car. for it's common for a three D part to just not be exactly in the measurements of that course, it's being printed. Because it will print to the nearest layer. And it can deform a little. It can bit. yes as well. So that millimeter of the three D part deforming can be important in failing yeah. one, of, one of these Wait, rules. I mean, if you look at this, there's a joint here, so we're probably losing a millimetre there. And, and likewise, there's a joint here at the front. Yeah. So what's the so, advice? Should teams just go into the limits of every single regulation no. or just give a good tolerance? I think, well, we used to have plus or minus, say, half a millimetre, and that is no longer. We've gone now to absolute. Absolute, measures. yeah. And that means that it, the onus is on the teams to employ their own tolerance yeah. of safety from the maximum or minimum dimension. And I would say if it's 210, be very foolish to make it any bigger than 209, unless you have Because you're, you're, you're risking for, if anything goes wrong doing the assembly or the 3D printing of a part or even the manufacturing exactly. of the model block, something And when you paint it wrong. as well, and when some people paint it. paint it and then they lacquer it and so on. You'll be surprised because that's, how much. that's because of the layers of paint being added, which can easily add easily. another millimeter to the dimension of the, of the car, isn't it? Yes. Uh, thanks for that. It, it, this is this is really interesting to have this this conversation. So let's so let's discuss uh, more, and it would, it would be really interesting to just uh, have some other demonstrations about how easy to fail the rule in order to help the teams when preparing for their work. So. A really easy one, uh, well, simple to demonstrate, uh, ground clearance. Yeah. So teams need to have a ground clearance of one and a half millimeters. So could you just quickly explain to us how, how an easy way of the teams measuring back home? Yeah. Um, in fact, this was the most common failure at the World Finals last year. One of the most common failures at the World yeah. Finals. And also the UK National Finals. Okay. That was involved in street name. So, um, yes, a lot of teams find it difficult in measuring. And they look at their drawing, engineering drawing, and their design intent was to have more than maybe 1.5 clearance. But so the, so the question is, when they're measuring it, is just one mil and a half from the body to from the floor? The, yes. Right. But also, but also, people forget about the eyelet. The eyelet. Because it's part of the car it's structure, isn't car. it? And if you look in the rules, you will actually see the dimension comes from the eyelet. From we the did eyelet. that on purpose. So it's that's basically the lowest point of, of the, the car, car into into excluding the wheels, the lowest part of the car. The lowest part of the car. So so let's just um, let's do a little bit of a zoom here and just try and show. So what do you have in your hand? With? I have a 1.5 drill. A 1.5 drill. So that's basically the the. The, the distance, distance that they cannot fail. Yeah. And normally, you know, when we're scrutinizing, we wouldn't be using a table. But we have a sheet of glass or a thick yeah. sheet of perspex that is as close to a level as we can get, or a proper surface table. Yeah. And uh, we set that down and we just move the car over, and you see the drill's been pushed. So, for example, this specific car, the, the part of his 
uh, wing structure. Uh, it's just it doesn't have the, the doesn't have clearance tips. because it's touching the one and a half mil drill. Exactly. That's that's a really and, easy one um, to check. Then. I think that we see this one. If I look at this car, yeah, um, you will see uh, once again. If I move this, you can see the eyelet is here, and if I move this sideways. You can see the drill is moving. So it's enough clearance on the body, but when it gets into the into the eyelet, it fails because it's just too close to the yeah. ground. And that's very easy to check, you know, for teams to do in their workshops before they, they come. You know, it's scrutineering, we always say, we take marks off. Every other judge gives you marks. Yeah. Uh, the main scrutineering I judges. Know.